All right, last week. What did we talk about last week? Albert, I don't remember. Was the week before that New Jerusalem come down? We touched on it. Touched on that. Intermediate heaven. Intermediate heaven. When you die, where do you go? We had two thoughts. You either go, your soul goes to heaven, or your spirit goes to heaven, and your body stays in the ground, or everything stays in the ground, and when resurrection comes, you pop up. So those are two topics. Uh, and then last week we talked about resurrected bodies. What are they going to be like? And what are they going to be like? Anybody remember? Yeah, uh, my uh, or... Yeah, and you know, in that part, I was thinking about that to where what we were wondering was, are you going to be naked? And we, well, they wear white robes, at least it said, so probably not. I'm sure we could wear jeans if we wanted, you know, Levi's. I'm sure that guy's not going to be opposed to it. Maybe, maybe, who knows? So, I don't know. We don't know, but the point was, are you going to be naked? It seems like they're going to be wearing robes. Probably not. Uh, but who cares? If we are naked, we're not going to be ashamed anyway. We're all going to be, I don't know, perfect. Whatever perfect means. Um, all right, so that's part of what we learned about the resurrected bodies. Anything else? What, 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 what do we know we're going to be like? All right, when you rise up, there was a one verse we read where it said, we know what we're going to be like because of something. Anybody remember that? Yeah, we know, we don't know exactly what we're going to be like, but we know we're going to be like him. And then we had a little discussion about why the, why the nails were, the scars were still in his hands if he was a resurrected body. You know, if he, if you're going to be perfect, where are you going to still have the scars and stuff like that? So, I mean, that's a, that's something we don't know, really. Uh, like I said, I believe it was intentional, that it was, you know, God, he left it that way so people could recognize him. Um, so, today we're going to get on to one that uh, I think is important, uh, really important. Um, what will heaven be like, alright? What is heaven going to be like? Alright, heaven is our home. And I, I was thinking about this, if, if heaven is going to be your eternal home, where are you going to be forever? You know, like say you're going to move, say we had to move, okay, we live in California, we're going to move to Australia. Oh, everybody, the, all of us, in a, t in a group. You know, wouldn't you want to, like, research a little bit to know what you're getting into, prepare? Should I bring shorts or sweats? Maybe not so much with heaven, but you just, you, you would, if, if it really is somewhere you're going to be forever, you'd want to know a little bit. And, and the amazing thing is God actually gives us some, some things, but this this is this is for you guys. It says in Philippians three twenty, but we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Jesus Christ lives, and we are eagerly waiting for Him to return as our Savior. So, I know that there's a lot of big talk about <clears throat> Mexico right now. Okay, we know there's illegal alien stuff like that. You know that kind of talk, and. Um, where your citizenship is, you know, everybody's so concerned about their citizenship, you know, I'm a, I'm American, or I'm from Mexico, or I'm from Guadalajara, whatever, you know, we're all concerned, but I, the, the Bible is telling us, at least Paul was saying, but we're citizens of heaven, you know, that's where we belong, and to take our focus off you know, you, you, not all of who you are is American or Mexican or whatever. You're actually a citizen of heaven. That's, that's where you should be. Uh, folk, your, your, your life is focused. We're citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we're eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. All right, so our, our home is in heaven. Our citizenship. What do you know about your home? And the bigger question is, are you even looking forward to it? I'm, I'm in the process of building my own home. I just bought a piece of dirt, nothing on it. Uh, Josiah wants me to build him a tent on the side. Um, but I'm in the process of it, and I'm look, so looking forward to it. My gosh, I cannot wait, because I live in a little 15 by 15 room right now. With uh, I share it with a brother of mine. And 
just thinking about to have my own house. Oh my goodness. Built, designed the way I want it. And I, you know, I can, the joy I have looking forward to it is amazing. Paul is trying to tell us, have that same eager desire for eternity. Look forward to it so badly. And we're going to see that in the, in the, you know, as we go. But that's the same kind of feeling we should have for heaven. And today we're going to figure out why. Um, what is heaven going to be like? And the last verse, uh, well, this is the one we're going to be studying. 2 Peter 3.13, But we are looking forward to the new heavens and a new earth as he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. So I think the big question you're going to have to think about today is, are you looking forward to it at all? Or are we so satisfied with, you know, life here on earth? Is there any, you know, are we, are we looking forward to anything better, anything greater? And, and I, the reason why they were so much is because they were getting persecuted badly for their faith. They were, you know, really going through it. And they could not wait. So, let's dive right in. What is heaven going to be like? Okay, is this a little hard to read? Sorry. All right, I'm going to throw something out a little uh, left field. Um, can you read this verse for us again, Carlos? Carla, sorry. Please. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. He has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. Okay, all right, so... Is it plural? New heavens? That's in the Bible? New heavens, new earth. Yeah. New heavens? Interesting. Interesting. So, but we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth, as he has promised, a world filled with God righteous, God's righteousness. All right, the word is new. All right, if the, if the new heaven and the new earth are going to be, what do you think it's going to be like? That's the question. All right, let's get some thoughts before we, before we go into this. New heaven and a new earth. What do you think it's going to be like? You can even use scripture verses if you know. Steve, what do you think? Yeah, just anything. What do you th if it's a new heaven and if it's a new earth, what's it going to be like? Imagination, use it. Fortnite, something. I don't know. I didn't really give it that to All right. Well, let's think about it now. All right. Elmer, what do you think? All right, say if there was going to be a new earth, what would be different about it? Cool. People? Would you want to be there? Yeah, I would. <laughs> All right, the people would be different. Okay. Forget the people. What about the earth itself? What would be different about it? Just your imagination, man. man. You don't have to have the right answer. Just... What do you think? All right, it's a little hard to comprehend. David, any thoughts? Chips? Yeah, it is. There was a new heaven and a new earth. What would be different? I think the earth would be restored. Okay, restored. What does restored mean? Like everything that we've done to it would kind of like revert. That's not brand new. What? That's not new. It's made new again. So that's... But Sorry. That, I think that, that conversation is why I put these Greek words up here. Yeah. So let's, let's read this. Kuna, you have any thoughts? Mm. What do you think? Mm. New heaven, new earth? What, what would be different about it? No thoughts. No thoughts. All right. Well, let's think about it. Here we go. All right. So the word new here in the Greek is kainos. All right. It means new. Mm. It's fresh. There's two words used in the Bible for new. In Greek, kainos and neos. Neos, there we go. All right? Anytime it talks about heaven, it's kainos. I hope I'm saying that right. All right? Um, fresh, new, unused, novel. All right, here's the definition. Properly new in quality, fresh in development or opportunity. Not found exactly like this before. All right, so the, and to break it down, I, I had to listen to some people talk about it because I was confused myself after reading that. New of same kind. Okay, that's kainos. 
new of same kind. Neos, new on the scene, recently revealed, or what was not there before, including what is recently discovered. Uh, something new in time in contrast to new in quality. Okay, so new of same kind, new in quality. There's some big changes. So anytime, anytime we're referring to heaven, new heaven, new earth, new of same kind. It's like a re, renewal, regeneration. It's bringing it back to what it was intended to be. That's the new, like renewed again. So uh, he, the guy I was listening to, he talked about shoes. He said, you know, I had these old shoes on, but if I had new shoes, they would look the same, but brand new. And if you had the Neos new shoes, they would be new, but they would be a different color, maybe orange or something, but new of the same kind. So when we think about new heaven, new earth, you know, we're wondering what the heck could God have in mind? You know, because you think it says, no, no, you cannot imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. So we think, man, I, you know, the world we're going to live in, who the heck knows? And rightly so, but we can imagine it to be new like this. Something new like this, all right? Why? So obviously there's a need for earth to be made new again, right? Because we've kind of destroyed it. Sure. What about heaven? Yeah. Um, I, uh, what I, I would and say... And why is there more than one? Yeah, I think, well, because we know that, you know, there's the heavens that we can see, and then there's the heavens where God exists. You know, there's he heavens. Um, but I, I think it's because heaven comes to earth. I think that's what, I think that's the idea, is that heaven comes to earth. Um, but that's a good question. But that's what I would, from just from thinking about your question, is why is there a need for a new heavens, new earth, is... Is because it's coming down. Um, I don't know that it's a new in that sense, but of course the universe is going to be renewed because it also is failing. Uh, it's in decay, and that's we're going to touch on that in a little bit. But yeah, that's a good question. Why? Why would the heaven where God dwells need to be renewed? Maybe it isn't. I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it's referring to. All of that here in heaven. So that's a good question. Um, all right, so that's new. All right, now we're going to read. We're going to read it. So if you can turn your Bibles to Revelations 21, we're going to actually read this chapter where it gives you the download from heaven itself. All right. So who wrote Revelations? Anybody know? Wrong. Anybody else? John. 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 Where did he write Revelations from? In an island, right? Pa In an island. Patmos. He was deserted on an island. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. yeah. No, he was he was exiled to an island. I he was in a cave. In a cave was one of John. John, yeah. No, he was exiled no, 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 to. No, 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 from the book of John. Uh, Revelations. Revelation. Revelation. My bad. Okay. So John wrote Revelation with no S. Okay. And God gave him a vision of heaven. All right. And what is it like? We're going to read it, chapter twenty-one and part of chapter and part of chapter twenty-two. So I'm going to ask for your help, and let's go. We'll uh, just read sections. We'll start with Carla, and we'll move around. Oh man, I had a Bible, but I don't know where it went. I'll use this one. Okay, here we go. Carla, give yeah. us some verses. What do you mean? Just read the whole thing? Uh, just read a section of it, a thought. Um, what section? 21. Just start. Just start reading. Oh, okay. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Heaven singular and a new earth. For the first heaven, huh? For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice fr from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. 
He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them at their, as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. Okay, let's, let's get so far. Any thoughts, Carla, or anybody listening, what you guys pulled from that? Okay, the new Jerusalem. What's it going to be like? I think that first word right there is enough to give us something. Okay, thoughts? And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away. Okay? Sounds like the old earth that dies and a new one comes to be. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride. All right? New, so this new Jerusalem coming out of heaven. <clears throat> holy city. City. All right? What's going to be like? It's a city. All right? Think about that, too. New Jerusalem, it's a city. Carla, did you glean anything else from these? Okay, so a new Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. It's a city coming down, and it's going to get into more detail. Uh, and then it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and he shall, they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. So God himself is going to come and be with his people forever. Okay, that's, that's the vision John's getting. That's... So far, New Jerusalem comes down, God's going to be with them. It comes down like a bride, and, and verse 4, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death, no more sorrow, no crying, no more pain. The former things have passed away. All right, so all of that is gone. Death kicked out, thrown into the lake of fire, along with everybody else who doesn't, you know, doesn't accept Jesus. Along with, which is the crazy part. Um, all right, so that's the first thing we're seeing here. And if you guys have anything else along the way, throw it out. Uh, let's pick up on verse 5. David, do you want to help us out? Give us a few. On um, 5? Yep. Just one, one, five? Yeah, 5, 6. One, why don't you give us 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. Then the one who sits on the throne said, And now I make all things new. He also said to me, Write this, because these words... Are true and can be trusted and he said it's done I am the first and the last the beginning and the end to anyone who is thirsty I will give the right to drink from the spring of the water of life without paying for it those who win the victory will see this from me I'll be their God and they will be my children but crowds cowards traitors perverts murderers and I mean the immorals those who practice magic, those who worship idols, and all that stuff. The place for them is the lake burning with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Okay, so any, did you get anything from that, David, about Can you read the last verse again? The last one? Yeah. But cowards, traitors, perverts, murderers, and murders the immorals, those who practice magic, those who worship idols, and all liars. The place for them is the lake burning with fire and sulfur, which is the second day. Talking, when talking about heaven, mentioning hell at the same time. Alright, so we read from verse 6 to 8. Anybody get anything? First one he talked about, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Um, I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I thought it said I will make all things new somewhere. Yeah. Uh, verse 5. Yeah, 5. five. I make all things new. Yeah, okay. 
So he who overcomes shall inherit these things. So that's what God's saying. He said, this is who I am. And this, you know, people who overcome, this is who I'm gonna, what, what I'm going to do for them. But, all right, let's just get that out there. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. All right? So that's the crazy part. And hey, right there, we're talking about heaven, but at the same time, the heaven is for the believers, you know, the saved, and for the unbelievers. Can or, I ask a question yeah, going yeah. back to one of the classes that we had before talking about hell? Any question you want. Okay, so second death meaning yeah. a second ending, but we were talking about eternal. Yeah, that's what I just came kind of like. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, you know, that one, I think that's where it gets the... A little touchy. Not touchy, but you have to dig a little deeper because um, at the same time it says forever and ever, burning forever and ever. That's their home forever and ever. And then at the same time we have this second death. So does that mean that if you go in there you die? Which is, it, which is uh, I can totally understand. It seems that way. So I think that's one we're going to have to study a little deeper, you know, because... It, there's all these verses that talk about eternal fire, eternal torment, eternal... It sounds like they're alive, eternally tormented. You know, it's, it's a place like this forever. It's not something you just die. Uh, even and, and so there's other verses that allude to an eternal, and to where this one says eternal, the second death. Um, it, it is a little confusing. So I, it's one that we're going to have to look a little deeper. We gotta, let's look into the Greek. And we, we could do that. For next class, I'll have some stuff on that. And if you guys want to bring some stuff too, let's talk about that. Because sure, that's a good question. But um, yeah, we're going to have to go a little deeper in that one. Um, more than we can get to right now. So yeah, I'll, I'll write that down. We'll go over that next week. Uh, let's, uh, alright, so we know that there's, there, there's going to be a lake of fire burning of brimstone, which is the second death. And we'll go over that next week. Um, I'm going to, I'll pick up on nine and then we'll have, uh, then one of the angels, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked to me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. Her light was like most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. All right, so he's getting a vision of this new Jerusalem, this new city coming down, and it's the light shining like clear crystal. All right, we'll let somebody pick this up. Uh, Josiah, you want to pick it up? Uh, verse 11 all the way... To 14, por favor. Having the glory of God, its radiance like most rare jewels, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates, and at the gates, 12 angels on the gates, and the names of the 12 tribes of the Son of Israel were inscribed. On the east, three gates, on the north, three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Alright, so we see a lot of jewels in here, references to jewels, you know, what it's going to look like. Um, and, you know, there's some things in here that are like hard to imagine. Her light was like precious stone. A great high wall with 12 gates, 12 angels at the gates, 12 tribes of it, names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, three gates on the west, and the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. All right, so it's, it sounds like, you know, that there's lots of 12s, 12 foundations, 12 walls, 12 gates. Um, and they're all having to do with the 12 tribes of Israel, 12 apostles. Um, so, 
it's giving us a picture of this, and, and again, you know, some of this may be metaphorical, some of it, it seems pretty literal, um, all of these things, and, and what it looks like. It seems very literal, what he's describing. Uh, so, I, you know, again, we don't need to go too deep into these things, it's just trying to give us an idea. Uh, verse 15, let's, let's read 15, this one's a little, uh, little tough. Elmer, you want to hit that one for us? You can explain it to us after. 15 all the way to, whew, where is this, 15 to 17. And the one who spoke with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city and its great walls, the gates and walls. The city lies four square, its length the same as its width, and he measured the city with his rod. 12,000 stadia? Its length and width and height are equal. He also measured its wall 144 cubits by human measurement, which is also an angel's measurement. The wall was built of jasper while the city was pure gold like clear glass. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second sapphire, the third the gate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth barrel, barrel, the ninth topaz, the tenth arnold. Amethyst? Oh no, no, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Just whatever. C color. Yeah, and and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each of the gates made of a single pearl, and the city of the square city was pure gold, like transparent glass. Right there, that's perfect. All right, whole big <coughs> description. All right, beautiful. All right, if I, if I can say anything, beautiful. All these different colors of gems and stones, the gates of pearls. It's actually in the Bible. Pearly gates. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 12 gates were pearls. 12 pearls. Each individual gate was one pearl. Okay, I, I can't understand that. It's a big round thing. I don't know. You know? I don't know. Um... But let's get to this, the, the hard part, which is the, the, the built, it talked about the city. Her, then he measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man that is of an angel. There's construction of it. There, no, sorry, uh, 16. The city was laid out as a square. Okay, imagine that. The city's laid out as a square. Uh... Its length, as great as its breadth, all right, square. Length, as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with a reed. 12,000 furlongs, its length, breadth, and height are equal. Length, breadth, and height are equal. Whatever, it's all the same. All right, anybody have a different version that gives us some units of measurement? 12,000... Uh, inches, feet, miles. Stadium. Okay, well, in my version that I, my Bible, I don't know where I put it, but it, it's uh, 1,400, oh, shoot. It's over here. It is? Possible. 1,400 miles, I believe. 15. 1500. 1500. Miles? Yeah, it's 1500 miles long and it was as, as wide as, as wide and high as it was long. There we go. Yep. Okay, mine says 1400 miles. Okay, but close enough. 1400 miles, 1500 miles. And the, the walls were 216 feet thick. Okay? So let's say 1,400, okay? Big cube coming out of heaven. 1,400 miles. Wide, long, breadth, everything. 1,400 miles. Big cube it's coming out of heaven, the New Jerusalem. All right, and that's, that's at least, you know, there's lots of debate on this with the scholars talking about what it is. Is that literal? Is it, you know, it's, it's tough. But it talks about the gates, all these different, to an even number. So that's a city coming down. All right, so don't get too hung up on all the dimensions. You know, is there enough room for me, all the people? Because that's the other question. It's like, there's a lot of people. You know, are we going to have rooms in there? 
We're going to be like in a cruise ship, you know, all tight. Um, Are we going to the new Jerusalem or the new heaven? <clears throat> um, no, the new Jerusalem is the new heaven. Yeah, no, no, it's heaven comes to earth. So we're not going up. Heaven comes to us. So, but after it is made new again. I don't know. It doesn't really say. It doesn't talk about us going to heaven. Up there. You know, the new Jerusalem and earth. At least that's what we're reading, you know. The new heaven and new earth for the old heaven and the old earth disappear. And I saw the holy city coming down from God out of heaven like a bride dressed for her husband. You know, and then it goes from there. Um, so your question is, what about the new heaven? Do we ever go up there, right? New heavens. Mm -hmm. I don't see why not, but... Uh, it seems like the focal point of what we're reading is that it comes to us. But I don't see why not. I'd love to go. Shoot, I'd love to go. All right, so we go to this. The 12 gates were made of pearls. Each gate was seen. And the main street was pure gold, as clear as glass. And I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. And we're almost done here. And the city was no need of a sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. No moon, no sun, so enjoy it now, guys, because we don't need it anymore in the new one. The nations will walk in its light. The kings of the world will enter the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day, because there is no night there. And all the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city Nothing evil will be allowed to enter, nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry, dishonesty, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life will be able to enter the city. Alright, so we got this big cube coming down onto the earth, descending the new Jerusalem, and then it's God is, that's where God dwells and there's no more temple this is his city it's uh and, and there's more references but you know we can understand what a city is and it's an it's the it's a city coming down and it also references country different things like that um and nothing evil will be allowed to enter nor anyone who practice shameful idolatry dishonesty only those whose names are written in the in the book of life all right, so that's a picture of heaven right there. Uh, one more, let's just read this last section in verse 22. Uh, we'll let Irene help us out on that one. Uh, all the way to verse 5, por favor. Chapter 22, 1 to 5, just hit us. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystals, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street of the city, also the other side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nation. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, or lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. All right. So, what is going to be in heaven in these few verses? It said a few things in here. Tree of life. Tree, yeah. And how often will it bear fruit? Well, all year long. And Every month. Kind of fruit. All right. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing 12 cups of fruit with fresh crop each month. The leaves are used for medicine to heal the nations. There's a river. There's fruit trees. All right. Um, throne of God will be there. Um, no night, for God's their light. Okay, so it gives us an idea. You know, there's going to be trees in heaven. There's going to be need for tree services in heaven. I know, we're going to be doing this for a long time. But, I don't know, I wonder. Oh God, dude, can I prune that this time? <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, but here's the, here's the, the crazy thing. is I know that all these references are kind of hard to imagine. Crystals and... Think about this, new earth, okay, new heavens, new earth. Everything about the earth, similar, but new, 
And uh, look, at, look at this. This will help you. We're almost done. Uh, like Carla was saying, a new earth means the world without the curse. Okay? We're living in a world right now that is fallen, cursed. This is what it says in Genesis 3, 6. When, when man sinned, when they sinned, they ate of the fruit. This was the curse God gave them. He said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. You will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat, until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. Okay, so that day they sinned, God cursed them. This was the curse, not only on the humans, on the earth too. Alright, you catch this right here? It will grow thorns and thistles. I've made a business out of controlling these things. Spraying weeds. It's profitable. Okay, but the, the, not only were we cursed, he said, the day you eat this fruit, you will surely die. Not only were we, you know, we have to die, the earth also. The earth is also dying. It's also decaying. And the earth is in a fallen state. It never used to have weeds. Trees didn't die. You know, uh, Things didn't get diseases. I, I also make a living on trying to fix tree diseases. You know, people are doctors fixing human diseases. That did not exist when God originally designed the world. He designed it perfect to last forever with Adam and Eve. And we have to now sweat and work to eat, to grow fruit and crops. We have to actually put effort into it. That's not how it used to be. So imagine a world... No curse, all right? No death, no decaying, no dying, no diseases. Perfection. And that's, if, if the word kainos means new of same kind, it's a new world, the way God designed it to be originally in all its glory and perfection, and greater than that. You remember the, uh, in the, the Israelites, when they went over to the Canaan, what did they bring back? What did they see? You remember that? Grapes. Grapes. How big were they? So big that two people needed to carry one. Yee. Huge grapes. And other fruit. And they were telling they were huge, you know, fruit and stuff like that. Uh, and that's, a, you know, that could be a whole other thing. I read that, that because there was, the water was closer to the earth, there was less radiation and it was able to grow better, something like that. But, uh, you know, just imagine what, what it was like, and, and think of it now, the earth in all its beauty, uh, what it looks like. Here's some pictures. Look at this. I don't know where it is, but it's beautiful. Um, you know, the beauty here. Look at these flowers. Look at how nice and beautiful. I mean, I can't imagine them getting any better than that. I cannot. This ocean out clear with fish, Cabo or something, Hawaii. You know, you look at that, and these are all in a fallen state. It's all, it's all dying and been that way for thousands of years. Some people believe millions, you know. It's been that way. This is all imperfect. What would it be like in perfection? What would it be renewed? I, I don't know. I'm having a, I, I have a hard time comprehending, but if kainos, mean, kainos means new of same kind, it's renewed, totally new. And the idea you can get from that, I was thinking about that. Kainos is used in another verse, um, in this one, for 2 Corinthians 5.17. And it says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life has gone and a new life has begun. I thought that was pretty cool that that new Kainos is you. That the, the same renewal, the earth is going to go through the same renewal that the new heavens, new earth. That same one we go through when we give our lives to God, you become new. You look the same. You know, I didn't change physically, but inside, something did. Something regenerated in me. You know, God's Spirit. So we can get an idea of that new heaven, new earth, because of what happened to us. You know, that something inside of us happened. New heart. Um, 
So what is heaven going to be like? It's going to be very, at least what it sounds like, very similar to the one we have now, in perfection, with God on it, with this big city coming down, the new Jerusalem, and with so much more. Why wouldn't we be able to experience the galaxies? If Jesus could walk through walls, and he could be in one city and be in another, if he could do all this in the new heaven and new earth, Maybe we could too. Um, and I'm reading a book by Andy Alcorn called Heaven. And uh, a lot of that, this is in there. You know, he, he, a lot of it is just speculation and imagination, but it doesn't go far from the text. So yeah, just look at this beauty. Then you look at Julia over there, or Carla and Irene. You know, just look at beauty and, you know, you can't imagine things getting much better. But they do. <laughs> they do. So, and I, that's, you know, no eye has seen, no, no, you cannot imagine what God has prepared, you know, to, to going back to that state with Adam and Eve, the perfection and greater, and greater than that. So next week we're going to talk about, you know, uh, we're going to go over the questions that were brought up, and then we're going to talk about what are we going to do there? Are we going to be playing harps forever, you know, or what are we going to do? So, for today, that's the new heaven and new earth. You can go back and study Revelations 21 and 22 if you're interested. There's more verses, but that gives you an idea of what it's about. So, um, yeah, let's, let's pray and we'll finish up.